Shalom. I'm sure you are still experiencing the joy of the resurrection as I am. And um, today, of course, Monday after Easter is still a deep experience of this mighty event. Today, I'd like to embark on something that niggles a little bit with me. You know, we are experiencing the great joys of resurrection and all that has happened in the last few weeks. We have reached a relationship with Christ that is amazing. Um, I'm sure in this journey we have all had the chance to see more clearly the, the way we live our lives and what needed to be confessed, repented of, and yes, in that whole journey of renewal to come to a point where we can feel we once again in a good relationship with Christ. But what about the millions who don't believe in Christ? What about those who haven't experienced this wonderful event of the resurrection? Those who don't care, those who ridicule, those who in a way delete anything related to Christianity to faith, to spirituality. Look at our schools. We may not read the Bible there. And in many other ways, um, Christianity is being oppressed. There are some countries that are actually persecuting Christians. Now Christ is also very concerned about this. As he said to Festina, when he appeared to her in, in this picture, which she saw very clearly, and saying to her, my heart aches for my people. My heart is full of love for my people. I'm full of compassion and mercy for, mercy for my people. And I really long that they experience the fullness of me and of life. And so here we have the world, not interested, turning their backs on Christ and not knowing just what deep relationship they are missing, what life they are missing, what joy they are missing. And never mind that in the course of this coronavirus, the COVID-19, this picture was sent around about Christ embracing the world, comforting it, wanting to heal it from all its pain, from all that is destructive. And yet, Many of the world turn their back. They don't care whether they're upside down or not. And so we say, now what? Here is Jesus wanting to hold us in health and wholeness. Here is the world not interested. Many, many not interested. Of course, there are lots and lots that are. And so Mary has become part of that chain. And she is, as I said a while ago, praying constantly for us. And she has been imploring us, please help us. Help Jesus, help me to save the world. We need you. And this is where I'd like to come in with this thing that's niggling me. So often we hear priests, bishops, the Pope say, pray for vocations, pray for priests that they can serve the parishes, that they can serve the diocese, pray for sisters that they will also come in. But what I would like to say is, I would give my whole heart to it, pray for our laity. Why? Because you live in a world that's a, quite a bit different to what we are living in. You are experiencing life at the roots. You are married, most of you. You have children to care for, to worry about. You're concerned about financial matters. You, you worry about the children who may go astray. You know what life is about. You're in there. Yes, we also understand family life from when we were in the family. But that's for me anyway, many years ago. But now, today, with all the challenges, with all the trials, who better to understand 
than you who are so rooted in family life. I feel strongly that as laity, this is your vocation, you who know life from quite a different angle to us. Through your knowledge and your love and your relationship with Christ, you can bring a totally different angle. Don't leave it to the priest and the sisters. Yes, they are important. I'm not denying that. But the role of the laity is for me a deep call today. It's a strong call because Jesus would like us to be like this. Can we as laity hold the world with our heart, embrace the world as Jesus embraces the world? Because you know the world and you have all you need to actually embrace the world. And you may say, oh sister, you're talking really something today. Yes, I am. Because how can we do this? We can't do it on our own. The sisters can't do it on their own. The priests and the bishops and the Pope can't do it on their own. We need to work together. And even that working together is not enough. What we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to be celebrating that way down the line. But just to think a little bit about the power of the Spirit. When all was dark in the beginning of times, the Spirit hovered over the world and this beautiful earth was created with all its beauty, with all the life, with all that it is. And of course, the top creation are we as people. And as we know, we went off the rails. And so God, our Father, being the God of love and compassion, the God of the eternal covenant, sent the Spirit, as we learned a while ago. And he overpowered Mary. And when Mary said yes, she conceived the Word of God, the Son of God, through the power of the Spirit. And so we know that through Mary and her love, new life was brought into being. And so Jesus, when he dies, is raised up to life. When the apostles were terrified and hiding in, in their rooms, in this upper room, what happened? The Spirit came. And suddenly there was no more fear. They could talk in different tongues. They could heal. They could make the blind see, the lame walk. And they were so filled with the Spirit, they had no problem to say what needed to be said. Not because they were in the seminary for seven years, or in the novitiate for six years, or training for six years. No, it was the Spirit who worked through them, who guided them, who helped them, who filled them with this passion. And where do we get that Spirit? Well, if we remember... When we were baptized, we were placed in the heart of our Trinitarian God and the Spirit hovered over us. So to it confirmation, again, the Spirit hovered over us. And maybe we were not conscious of what actually happened. In simply submitting to that Spirit, letting my being be used by the Spirit, allowing the Spirit to overwhelm me, to fill me, to surround me. Life could happen. And, and so today, I would like to bring this across. Don't think that the life of the church is dependent only on priests and sisters, on the bishop, on the cardinals, on the pope. No, it's heavily laden on you as the laity. Christ is asking you and myself, and by the way, I'm also laity, is asking us to embrace the world, to love the world, so that all the world may come to know our beautiful Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our King, our Lover. 
Can you accept this challenge today? Not alone, but in that mighty power of the Spirit. If we give ourselves to the Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, work in me, use me, help me to be part of the team, Jesus, Mary, and the Spirit, and God our Father, to bring new life to the world, that all people may enjoy resurrection. I wish you the courage and the willingness to take on this holy, awesome calling. God bless you, and may the joy of the resurrection continue to fill you with life and laughter and joy. Till the next time.